Jesus said, I tell you, on the day of judgment, people will give an account for every careless word they speak. For by your words, you will be justified, and by your words, you will be condemned. What we say and the things that we talk about are extremely important to God. Today, we're going to be talking about five things that Christians should stop saying. Hey, welcome back to the Down to Earth Christian. If you have questions or topics that you would like to see us discuss here on the channel, there is a link down in the description below, or you can scan the QR code that is on the screen here and submit them because we would love to hear from you. Now, I know that making a video like this about how Christians should talk might step on some toes. Let me assure you, I have stomped all over my own toes first I know that this is something that many of us struggle with. Don't be overly offended. We all want to try and improve, and that's all we're trying to do here. So what are some of these things that we need to stop saying as Christians? Well, number one is, I think we really ought to stop saying, oh my God, or oh my God, or all of the other derivatives of that with Jesus and with Christ and Jesus Christ and OMG and and G's and all of those types of things, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Now, of course, that command comes from the old law, but we do see something very similar to that in the New Testament. Listen to what Jesus has to say as he gives his model prayer. Pray then like this, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. When Jesus says, hallowed be your name, what he's saying here is that his name is to be treated as holy. It is to be revered. It is to be something that is to be special, not just this little catchphrase that we throw around here and there whenever we're, oh, we're surprised. Oh my God. Or we're disgusted. Oh my God. It's not something that we are to be using in that way. You know that people all around the world, people who can barely even speak English know how to say, oh my God. They know how to say that because they see it in our movies. They see that that's the way that we talk apparently. And they learn that the Lord is not to be revered, that he's not to be treated as holy, that we can just throw it around any old way we want. As Christians, we're in the world, but we're not to be of the world. We are to have our minds transformed. We're not to be conformed to this world, but we're to be transformed by the renewing of their mind. And you know, I think that most people out in the world, whether they're religious or not, understand that you should not be degrading God. You know, and when we talk like this, we're basically, we're basically saying that that we're not taking God seriously. And besides that, when we speak this way and we use the name of God in offensive ways, we are being highly offensive then to our brothers and sisters. And why would we want to do that? So number one, let's try and stop saying, oh my God, OMG, Jesus Christ, Christ, Jesus, and so on and so forth in ways that are not showing reverence to God and treating his name as holy. Number two, the second thing that I think that all Christians should stop saying is things like good luck, bad luck, cross your fingers, jinx, and all of those other superstitious phrases because we do not rely on superstition. We rely on the all-powerful God. When somebody has, say, a job interview, one of our friends, and they're going off to the job interview, we say, hey, good luck. What are we saying there? Right? Good luck. I hope that this superstitious thing of luck somehow manifests itself into your life with goodness and you get this job. No, there are so many other great phrases that we could use that have nothing to do with superstitious luck, right? I mean, we could say, hmm, I hope you get the job. Hmm, you'll do great. I'm pretty confident you'll do well. Let me know how it went. I'm rooting for you. That was kind of cheesy, but you get the idea. There's a lot of them. I'll be praying for you. 
I would only say that though, if you're actually going to be praying for them. When somebody has a, a series of things that have gone bad in their life or gone bad over the last few weeks, oftentimes they'll say something like, man, I'm really having a string of bad luck. You know, when we say things like that, it absolves us of responsibility. It puts us into a victim mentality. Could it be possibly that we have just made a string of poor decisions rather than had a string of bad luck? Throughout the Bible, we are instructed to walk wisely. In Ephesians chapter 5, Paul has been encouraging the Christians to, to live properly, to not be deceived, to not take part in the unfruitful deeds of darkness. And then he says this, look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of your time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Paul also said in Colossians, walk in wisdom towards outsiders, making the best use of your time. And then over in one of my favorite books, the book of Proverbs, the prudent sees danger and hides himself, but the simple go on and suffer for it. You know, if, if I don't check the oil in my car and it breaks down on the way to an interview, the, the most important interview of my life, the best job in the entire world, the thing that I've been waiting for, is it because of bad luck that my car broke down, I didn't make it to the interview, and I didn't get the job? No, it's because I wasn't prudent. It's because I saw something, my car, and it needs regular maintenance, but I didn't do it, and now it broke down. It's it's because of the mistake that I made, not because of some imaginary force of bad luck. We live in the middle of the forest here in North Idaho. And if I don't clear the trees away from the house and there's a forest fire and my house burns down, is it because of, of bad luck that my house burnt down? No, it's because I saw the danger out there. The danger is I live in the middle of the forest and there's forest fires around here sometimes. And if I don't clear the trees away, then I'm not being prudent. I haven't hid myself. And so I will suffer the consequences of that. Maybe, maybe sometimes it's because of our poor choices that we suffer things that we don't like. Other times, maybe, it's just because it's not the Lord's will. Come now, you who say, today or tomorrow we will go to such and such a town and spend a year there and trade and make a profit. Yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? For you are a mist that appears for a little while, then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast in your arrogance, all such boasting is evil. Right? We don't rely on luck, knocking on wood, crossing our fingers, or any other type of superstition to try to bring about some good outcome or try to avoid some bad outcome. We walk in wisdom. We analyze the situation. We see the dangers. We make the best decision and we trust in God. We believe in an all-powerful God not in superstitions. The fourth thing that we as Christians really need to stop saying is cussing, foul language, cursing, four-letter words, vulgarity, obscenities, and the laundry list of other words that mean basically the same thing. Let no corrupt talk come out of your mouths, but only such as good for building up as fits the occasion that it may give grace to those who hear. That's really clear, but I really like the way the Amplified Version kind of brings out the meaning of what Paul is saying here. Do not let unwholesome, foul, profane, worthless, vulgar words come out of your mouth, but only such speech that is good for building up others according to the need and the occasion so that it will bring a blessing to those who hear you speak. So from this verse, we can see that Christians should really not be using profane, worthless, vulgar, foul words. These things are offensive to most 
people. I mean, should we unnecessarily be offensive? I don't think so, right? God says, let your speech be gracious, seasoned with salt so that you may know how you ought to answer each person. Even the world knows that we shouldn't be speaking like this. That's why they have ratings for TV shows and for movies because of foul language. Some songs even have two versions, right? They'll have a radio version and then they'll have the explicit version. Why do they have a radio version and an explicit version? Because the world knows that you shouldn't be broadcasting profane words over the airways for everybody to hear. Even podcasts will have that little E there, meaning explicit, a warning to you that they are gonna be using words that everybody might not want to hear. I know that a lot of us are, are new Christians and that, and that we struggle with this, right? This has been part of our past. It's, it's almost become a habit and it's hard to break a habit. I understand that, I know that. It was hard for me to break this habit. But here's a little helpful exercise that may, that may help you as you, you think about the things that you say or the things that you want to say or, or don't want to say. But if you're younger, think about it like this. Ask yourself this question. Would, would my grandmother like to hear me speak like this? Or, or would I want my grandmother to hear me speak like this? Right? That could kind of be a guide for you. But but what if you're older, right? What if you're older like me or, or even older than me? Well, you might ask this question. Would I like to hear my grandchildren talk like this? Would I like my five-year-old grandson to come up and, and cuss out the dog? I don't think we would. I think any sane person would say no. From the scriptures, we can clearly see that God wants us to, to use words that are helpful, to use words that are a blessing to other people, that build other people up, that don't tear other people down. He does not want us to be unnecessarily offensive. And so why don't we try and eliminate all of those words from our vocabulary. The next thing that we wanna talk about, in my opinion, is far worse than the issue of cussing, and that is of gossip. You know, we, we, we are tricky. We, we come up with these, these ways to get around gossip. We call it other things so that we can go ahead and gossip. We call it things like processing, right? I am, I'm processing this. Will you help me process this problem I have? Let me tell you about what Susie did to me. You know, or, or I'm just thinking out loud here. Would you help me think out loud here as I, as I work through this, this problem? And, and in that, we tell all kinds of gossip, right? Or, or I'm venting, right? Bob did me wrong, and now I need to vent to Bill over here. And, and I tell Bill all of this terrible stuff. Oh, I'm not gossiping, Bill. I'm just venting, right? Or we'll say things like, I don't want to gossip, but did you hear about Bobby and Susie? Or um, I don't know if this is gossip, but I don't know if I should really be telling you this, but if you start off a sentence with, I don't know if it's gossip, or I don't know if I should be saying this, you probably shouldn't be saying it, right? There's a story of an old man. An old man wants to, he wants to impart some wisdom to this young guy. And uh, he wants to tell him about the, the dangers of gossip. And so the old man is talking to the young boy and he takes this pillow and, and he takes this knife and he says, here, take this pillow and he gives him it. It's a nice feather pillow, right? He gives him the pillow and then he gives him the knife. And he says, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go down to the town square and I want you to cut open that pillow and shake all the feathers out of it in the town square and then come back. Boy's like, okay. I mean, that sounds kind of fun. So he goes down there and he cuts open the pillow and he's, whoosh, he's whoosh, flaying all these feathers everywhere. And like, they're all going everywhere. It looks really cool. I mean, it looks really pretty, like it's snowing. So he goes back and, and uh, he goes to the old man and he says, hey, I did what you said. It was really fun. And he's like, that is great. Now what I want you to do, I want you to go back to the town square and I want you to pick up every single one of those feathers and put them back in the pillowcase. The young boy sees the problem. He's like, man, that is, 
That's impossible, right? I mean, there's no way that I'm going to be able to find all those feathers. I mean, some of them were like blowing away really far. They're up on the roofs of the buildings. And some I saw were stuck to people's shoes and stuck to their backs of their coats as they were walking away. I will never be able to find all of those feathers. And the old man tells him, well, you know, that's just like gossip, right? I mean, we, we say something to somebody about somebody else and it goes into them and then it comes back out of them and it spreads, man. It spreads so fast and we have no control over it. We can never get it all back after we've said it. And that's one of the reasons why gossip is so dangerous. It is uncontrollable. But here's another reason why gossip is so dangerous. A dishonest man spreads strife and a whisperer separates friends. The fact is this, if you are someone who is given to gossip or into spreading rumors, you are going to divide people. There are seven things that the Lord hates. The last one of them is one who sows discord among brothers. For a lack of wood, the fire goes out, and where there is no whisperer, quarrels cease. Gossips and whispers, and they keep problems going. They keep them alive. They, they like keep adding wood to the fire so nobody can forget about it. Have you ever had a problem maybe within your family or within your friend group or maybe even within your church and the problem was dealt with, but someone or some people just keep bringing it up. They just keep talking about it. They just keep relating this situation here with that situation there wondering, oh, is this person doing this now because they did this in the past? You know, and, and they keep talking about it and they keep bringing it up and they keep telling others about the problem. Oh, you remember back five years ago when Betty Sue did this? Oh, have you heard about what so-and-so did three years ago? And they keep bringing up these problems and people can never really heal they can never really get over the problem because of gossips and whispers. And do you know how God feels about gossips? And since they did not acknowledge God, God gave them up to a debased mind to do what ought not be done. They are filled with all kinds of unrighteousness, evil, covetousness, malice. They are full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, maliciousness. They are gossips. Slanderers, haters of God, insolent, haughty, boastful, inventors of evil, disobedient to parents, foolish, faithless, heartless, ruthless. They know God's righteous decree that those who practice such things deserve to die. They not only do them, but they give approval to those who practice them. If we are prone to gossip, we are keeping company with some of the worst people in the world, with those who are full of envy and murder and strife and deceit and maliciousness. We're keeping company with the foolish, the faithless, the heartless, the ruthless. Maybe gossip doesn't seem like such a big deal to you, but it's a very big deal to God. You know, sometimes it's difficult to, to know whether something is gossip or not, or it's just news, or we're not sure, right? I mean, we live in this world. We're not to be of the world, but at the same time, there's the news cycle that we're always watching. They're always gossiping on TV, you know? I mean, it's everywhere. And so sometimes it's difficult to know, and I, I totally get that, and I struggle with that myself. Here's a good tip that can help us. If we're not sure whether something's gossip or not, just ask the person that you're going to be talking about. Say, hey, Betty, uh, would you mind if I shared that with all of my friends? Hmm. No? Well, okay then. So if she says no, then don't share it with anybody. And, and if I'm too embarrassed to ask her, you know, uh, Betty, I can't even ask her. You know, I mean, of course she doesn't want me to share that with anybody. I'd be embarrassed to even ask her if I could share that with other people. It's going to be gossip for sure, man. Don't go saying it. If you're not willing to ask the person whether you can share the information, don't 
share it. A lot of what we've been talking about is, is really just bad habits that we have brought with us into Christianity. It's the way we used to live and we haven't been able to like break free of it or we haven't been able to get rid of that habit. Maybe because we haven't really tried that hard or maybe we didn't really realize that we were doing it, but now that we are convicted that we need to change our lives, how do we go about doing that? I have some tips that might be helpful. Number one is to limit our exposure to what we hear. The less we hear people cussing, the less we hear people saying, you know, oh my God, or the less we hear people gossiping, the less we're going to say those types of things as well. Don't be deceived. Bad company corrupts good morals. Of course, we can't just isolate ourselves from the world, but we can do some things to limit our exposure. Number one, our friends. If our friends have foul mouths and take the name of the Lord in vain, they say things, they gossip about things that we don't want to be a part of anymore, it might be time to get some new friends. Another thing that is more easy to do than to cut off relationships with friends is to limit the movies and the TV that we take in. Let me tell you about a product that we use. This is not sponsored. They are not paying me to say this. This is something that we use here in our family, right back there on that big TV whenever we're watching it. And that's called VidAngel. VidAngel is a service that you subscribe to and then it links to your other accounts. Like it'll link to Netflix or it will link to Amazon Prime or some other services that maybe you're subscribed to. And then you play it through VidAngel and it filters out all kinds of stuff. There's all these little check boxes that you can check and it will, it will eliminate. Like you don't want to hear blasphemy? You check that box. You don't want to hear the Lord's name taken in vain? You check that box. You don't want to hear foul language? You check that box. You don't want to see sex scenes? Well, it'll take that out. And so it makes it really smooth. You can barely even tell that they've edited it, but you're not taking in all of those foul words. So if that's something that you're trying to avoid, you might want to look at VidAngel. I'll put a link down in the description below and you can check that out. Just avoiding things is not really going to do it for you. We need to fill ourselves with the good things. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. And as you begin to focus on the things that are good, that are praiseworthy in this world, you will begin to change and you will begin to speak about the things that are good, the things that are praiseworthy, and you will not be focused so much on the negative. You can also ask others to help you stop doing some of these things. If you hear me cussing, would you please tell me? If you hear me start to gossip, would you please stop me? But don't get mad if they actually help you and point out the things that you're doing that you said you didn't wanna do. That happens sometimes, but let's try not to do it. Now, before we look at the last thing that I think we really need to stop saying, I just wanna make it clear that we are just brushing the surface of each of these topics. I mean, we could dive a lot deeper into every one of these points. And if that's something that you think that we really ought to do, let me know down in the comments below. Also, if you think I've missed something like, man, why didn't he mention this? We'll put that in the comments below because I'm sure that there are all kinds of things that you think that we ought to stop saying as Christians, but I didn't mention it in this video. So the last thing that I really think that we as Christians need to stop saying is saying things that we don't really mean. Or another way we could say that is to break our promises. Jesus said that our yes is to be yes and our no is to be no, right? We are to be people of integrity. And sometimes though we say things that we don't really mean, probably because we haven't really thought about the consequences of it or the implications of what we've just said, and we forget that we even said it because we said it meaninglessly. Like, I'll pray for you. 
Have you ever said, I'll pray for you, and then not prayed for the person, right? Like you said it, and then before you even ended the conversation with them, you already forgot you said you'd pray for them. And I've done that. You know, when we made a commitment to the Lord, we made a commitment to follow all of his teachings. Jesus said to make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that he has commanded them. When we made that commitment, we committed to worship with the saints every first day of the week. That's part of being a Christian. It's not the only thing, but it's part of being a Christian. And so many of us don't keep our commitment to the Lord and to his church. Right? We don't show up on Sunday morning to worship our Lord and, and gather with the saints and to stir one another up for love and good deeds because of hobbies, right? because of sporting events, or because of other things that really aren't vital to our life. Why are there so many divorces amongst Christians if we're people who keep our word, if we're people who keep our vows, I mean, how many people have borrowed money from a bank or from some other lender and promised to pay it back? They sign their name on the contract and then they go into bankruptcy and they do not pay it back. We need to be people of our word. It is better that you should not vow than that you should vow and not pay. I know that we want to make people happy, that, that we want to agree to things, that we want to, we want to be a yes man. We want to be a people pleaser. So often that is the case, but we shouldn't be like that. I mean, how many times have you overextended yourself, right? You've, you've committed to be with this person at this place at this time. And then you went ahead and you committed to this person to be at a different place at the same time. And now there is a conflict. You have to break one of your vows. I've done that. I know it. It's frustrating. Why? Because I don't think about the commitments that I already have. It is a snare to say rashly, it is holy, and to reflect only after making vows. And that is exactly how it happens. I promise to be with this person and I promise to be with that person at the exact same time in two different locations. I'm driving home and it hits me like a ton of bricks. And I realize that I've double booked myself. I have to violate my vows with one of these two people, right? We need to be people who can be trusted. Trust is something that is very rare in the world today, but it is something that we should be. That is trustworthy. If you're a Christian, then people should know that they can trust you because you're a person who keeps your word. I know that I probably stepped on some of your toes. I know that I've been stepping on my own. So if you'd like something that's a little bit lighter, I've got a three-part video series right over here that will walk you through an overview of the entire Bible. I know you're gonna like it. I'll see you over in those videos in just a second.